Hey, disclaimer. Greetings, employee. Currently registered member of the crew, Larry, he ha That's not who I am. I'm lying, okay? Uh, wait. As part of regular protocol system, please enter your first name to log in to the ship systems. You have entered line. Is this correct? Uh, yes. Okay, please enter your pronouns, uh, subject, oh, uh, he, they? Uh, are these pronouns correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, wait, wait, uh, no, wait, hang on. Um, uh, does it matter? Because I'm, I'm not sure if, like, um, it's programmed in a way where, like, um, it'll actually detect these two. I don't know if, um, I don't know if... Ranpai can even do that. Um, I'll just go with they, them, I guess. They, them. Uh, yes, that's who I am. Huh. Please register your favorite enemy. But my favorite enemy? My favorite... What? Wait. Favorite enemy. God, I do love the loot bugs. I do love the loot bugs. Oh, but you know, since we came here for a good reason, Bracken. You have registered your favorite enemy, uh, Bracken. Is that correct? A uh, good choice type, yes. <laughs> yes. Lending on experimentation. Wait, what? Um, what? Why am I in an anime? <laughs> Day one. I was hoping for a fresh start, but I'm just in depth. I sigh as I jump off the side of the rickety ship. Boots kicking up a flurry of dust. Another day... Two undergrad degrees, one postgraduate, and a whole year of rejection emails. This is the best I can get. A rundown job doing god knows what in the middle of bum frick nowhere in a desperate attempt to pay off my student debt. I collect scrap, drop it off, receive payment, rinse and repeat. Sighing, I unlock my phone to check on my main group chat. It's my only solace keeping me going in this monotony. Which is kind of sad now to think about it. Affectionately named the Hot Monster Simp Chat, they've asked me to keep them updated during my assignment on this new moon. I scroll through the chat and peruse the usual flood of way too sexy monster pics before typing out a response. Ayo, hey landed safely. Immediately, I get a ping back from Ori. Of course, she will be the one to reply the quickest. If you see any hot monsters, kiss them. I laugh and type out a response. This isn't fantasy stuff, like Merhaze Hora from Elder Papyrus. I don't want to die. Another friend responds with a fake crying gif. Uh, chuckling to myself, I lock my phone and stash it in my pocket, turning to my teammate. Also, yes, I know it's gif. Just, just roll with it. What's the status? Larry turns and brandishes his clipboard. We haven't worked together before, but people back at HQ says he's easy to get along with, which rings true so far. Plus, he's a great navigator and has experience with the freakish weather patterns common on alien moons. Everything looks good. Weather shouldn't be too bad for the duration we're here. Also, by my calculations, there's an 88% chance of a storm happening tomorrow morning. Oh, should we set the shields up? Nah, let's do it later. We can grab some scrap inside and set it up when the sun isn't so harsh. Nodding, I strap on the essentials, a flashlight and a walkie-talkie. When they're secured across my shoulder, I grab a shovel. Thanks, Larry. Luckily, we shouldn't be here for too long. The quota isn't much this time. Larry nods and gathers up his flashlight and a shovel before jumping off the side of the ship, kicking up dust as he lands. I follow, looking up towards the looming building overhead. Experimentation. An abandoned moon that once held life. Not very dangerous compared to the likes of other moons like Dine or Titan. I turn to Larry. We should be careful. Always am. I half as I stagger back towards the door, holding a large crate of bottles and a bolt. My shovel balanced precariously on top. 
I haul my cargo over to the ledge, dump it onto the dusty ground below, before descending and talking to my walkie-talkie. Larry, I'm carrying stuff back to the ship. I'll hop on the terminal on the terminal for a bit after. Okie dokie, Panapolo Pokey. Back on the ship, I organize the current loot we have and do a quick scan. 80 credits. Not bad for the first haul of the day. While I'm there, I jump on the terminal, bringing up the monitor to check Larry's location. Nothing around you at the moment, Larry. I keep an eye on this little dot, walking around in the dark. Then I see it. Larry, be careful. Something's vented in an adjacent hallway. Dad, my flashlight's about to die! I can guide you. Just be quick, okay? Okay, okay. You can get me out, right? Yeah, I can do this. It's not like I haven't been like the navigator on the ship before. I watch the red blip on the map slowly advance towards Larry. Approach you on your six. Hurry. I watch on the monitor as Larry turns around and whatever is coming up behind him freezes in place. Larry, you okay? Uh, I think I'm done for. What is it? My voice shakes. New creature data sent to terminal. It, it isn't moving. I've scanned it. My fingers fly across the keyboard, bringing up the file. I quickly skim the file. I I think if you keep your eyes on it, it won't move. Oh no, it's a coil head! No! <laughs> what, like some weeping angel BS? Yeah, hey, it'll be okay. I can see you on the monitor. Remember, I'll guide you out. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, let's do this. Sorry for yelling. No, that's okay. You're all good. Go straight backward. Keep your hand on the wall and take the first right. I need to get Larry out of there. Larry staggers backward, slowly rounding the corner. The coil hit springs forward at breakneck speed before freezing once it's in line of sight. Go! I know, I know. I'll get you out, I promise. Several more instructions and words of comforts later. Larry is almost out of the labyrinth sprawl of hallways. Suddenly, a second red dot appears from a nearby vent. Wait, isn't this from Incompetech? Larry, something's vented a few hallways down, but we're almost there. Just keep moving. The dot rushes towards Larry. I need you to walk fast. You're just two turns away. Larry's speed picks up. The second red dot makes contact. Three things happen. I see Larry turn. The call head rushes towards him. And finally, the walkie-talkie activates. But all I hear is a sickening spring sound. Larry? You there? Please say something! Hello? Silence. I shot off the terminal. I couldn't do it. I feel sick. Hours pass and I remain on the floor, slumped over with my head resting on the terminal. Head, what, wait, well, well, uh, head over the autopilot or grab the remaining cargo. Well, uh, uh, grab the remaining cargo. I should, I should go grab the items at the entrance. I slowly make my way to the front doors of Experimentation Site Building. Every step up the ladder is an ordeal as I heave my sluggish body up the rungs. I drag my feet across the dirt before pushing the door open with a loud creak. I gather the items left at the entrance, my muscles achy and slow with fatigue. A laser pointer, a crystal, and a jar of pickles. What was that? I look up. Oh, eyeballs! I make eye contact with a dark shape, looming in the corner, watching me. I fly into a panic, scrambling back in the, against the door as it steps into view. Tall, humanoid, and dark in color, with glowing white eyes. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> Several leaf-like structures protrude from its back. Wait, they were leaves? They were leaves this whole time? I thought they were tentacles. God, that would have made it so much harder if they were tentacles. Its eyes widen, and it takes a step forward. I need to distract it. My fingers grasp the crystal and toss it at the creature. It falls short, landing at its feet. It stops, staring at the gem as it skids to its feet with a clattering sound. I take the chance to escape through the front door and sprint back to the ship. I don't sleep well that night. Day 2. 
Do you love the Bracken and its two-hit multi-attacks? I'm awoken by the horrific sound of the aircraft shuddering. It creaks loudly as if the metal plating is barely holding together. The storm. In my state last night, I forgot to set up the protective shields. God damn it! The ship rattles as the storm batters the metal exterior. I hear something tearing and landing on the ground with a heavy thud. I have no choice but to wait till the storm subsides. Bunkering down in my cot, I wrap myself in my blanket. The winds tear at the ship's exterior. The entire ship creaks and shakes, pebbles making horrific clanging sounds against the sheet metal. I check my phone to see if I can at least talk to my friends in the hot monster sim chat. No signal. Great! I cover my ears, close my eyes, and wait. Whichever claims me first, sleep or the storm, it can find me here. Several hours pass. After checking to make sure the weather is safe, I head outside to assess the damage. Well, damn. The ship is battered. The satellite on top is torn clean off and upside down in the dirt. There's a dark, black, viscous liquid draining out of the fuel tank. I rush inside to check the terminal. Comes an autopilot. Offline, flashes on the screen in bold red letters. God damn it! I slap the terminal in frustration. Immediate regret sets in, and I cradle my hand. I need to find some way to repair the ship, or... I don't want to think about that, or... Maybe I can find something usable inside the building. I'm not to worry about food, since there's a water source and some edible flora and fauna on the planet. I'm more worried about what lurks inside the building. But given that Larry and I were the only two on this assignment, and Larry's gone... I have no choice but to face whatever's in there. Alone. I spend the first part of the day inside the building, sticking close to the front exit and fire escapes. At least if anything comes to me, I have a chance of bolting. I avoid the labyrinth of hallways, for now. But something feels strange. Like something is watching me. I know it can't be Larry, but I don't want to think of it being anything else. I'm just paranoid. It's understandable. After what happened yesterday, there's nothing there. I mutter to myself, hell-bent on deluding myself so that I can keep it together. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing. I head back the way I came and stop. There's something on the floor. A bolt sits on the ground, alongside a laser pointer. Huh? I don't remember seeing these. Must have missed them or dropped them. Oh, I'm so tired. I just didn't realize, I guess. I pick up the items and head to the front door, depositing them outside before re-entering the building. Looks like I've cleared the front area. It seems like it's time to go further in. The bolts are useful, and the sheet metal too, so if I can find more, maybe I can make some repairs. I flick on my flashlight, grip my shovel, and step into the labyrinth of hallways, and made sure to move the necessary blasted doors beforehand so it was easy to move around. An hour passes dully. And I sigh as I stumble over my sixth key. Can't I get something useful? That's when I hear it. The shill creak of rusty hinges as a vent opens. I turn around and bolt towards what I desperately hope is the exit. It's not. Where's the exit? Where is it? Frick, 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 frick! I turn down corridor after corridor. The echo of my footsteps far too loud. A chill grips my spine when I realize... It's not just my footsteps thundering down the hall. I turn. A horrific twang fills my ears, and I stand to the worst thing imaginable. Uh, why is Coilhead... Why is Coilhead like this? With the pale body, unnaturally stiff arms, and a large coil topped with a banged-up mannequin head. Frick, it came right to me? The Coilhead that killed Larry towers over me. Its head bobbing menacingly. Ah! Uh, uh, <laughs> As if fate was written to laugh at me, my flashlight flickers before going out. I'm screwed. I'm going to die on some distant moon working on a on a terrible job that pays peanuts without ever making a dent to my ever-growing student debt. I'll never get to talk about how mitochondria from Wyvern Orbsy is hot with Ori and Tube ever again! Uh, help? 
I can barely get my voice above a whisper. Not that it would even matter. There's no one to hear me. No one to help. Even if I could be heard. I whimper and take a step back. My hand shaky as it traces the rough brick. Step by step, I move backward. Trying to desperately remember my way back. My fingertips scrape against the wall. In desperation. And my eyes focus on the creature in the darkness. But the further I get, the less sure I am that I'm squinting at anything. I round the corner. God! The coil head appears in my jumper side at breakneck speed. The sound makes me jump. I start crying. The sound of its springs bounces off the wall aggressively. I can't do this. I'm done. I can't even say goodbye to my family or my friends. I take another step and stumble backward, falling. I close my eyes. I hear a loud crunch and my eyes fly open. The coil head hasn't made it to me. Something is keeping it at bay. An aggressive growl reverberates off the walls, and gradually I make out the outline of a tall black humanoid gripping the coil head. Its claws rake down the creature with a sickening tear. The other monster that I saw yesterday. The one I tossed loot at. I stare at the scene, unmoving and dumbfounded. The creature crushes the coil head's arms with its strong grip. I watch in fascination as the leafy tendrils on its back strain into blades. They extend, surging around the coil head, and then stab into it. I don't dare to breathe. Maybe it doesn't see me. Um, what happened? Then a dull spring sound, followed by a thump, makes my eyes bulge. The creature ripped the coil's head, the coil head's head off. A hissing sound fills the air as the coil head's body behind shudders and crackles, emitting flames and a strange gas. Now's my chance! I attempt to scramble to my feet, wincing as a sharp pain shoots up my ankle. Ugh! I also heard it when I fell. I start dragging myself forward, terrified. I just need to get far enough away so that I... The world flips upside down. My feet no longer touch the ground. Strong arms cradle me as my surroundings pass in a blur. Whatever has me, we're running from the exploding, from the exploding coil head. When I open my eyes again, I'm back at the entrance. I'm placed gently on the ground, my back resting against the exit door. The leaf-adorned creature crouches over me, looking almost concerned. <laughs> what the hell? Is this an ad break? Oh my god. Um, wait, why are there petals? I'm trembling. I don't know what this creature is. Is it, is it purring? Hi? It shifts closer and my eyes widen. Uh, where panic and smack you with your shovel, hold still and stay calm. I don't think we stand a chance against a bracket. I'm going to hold still and stay calm. I accept my fate! Take me, Bracken! Give me a piece of the Bracken! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But have you seen the Bracken's cake? I mean, not in this game, okay? Like, in in actual uh, Lethal Company, the Bracken has such a... He, he has such an amazing cake, and I, I am just so in love with the Bracken. Like, you have no idea. I stay frozen, maintaining eye contact as it gently trills its claw, coming up and softly grip my chin, turning my head from one side to another. Are you checking if I'm hurt? It pauses and purrs, as if to say yes. Um, this means yes. I demonstrate by nodding my head and then shaking it, and this means no. I watch as it makes a soft, inquisitive sound before pointing to me and nodding tentatively. Oh, uh, thank you. It chirps. Chirps? I try to stand, but my ankle still hurts. I yelp as it gathers me into its arms again. Hey, you don't have to... Sunlight hits my face as it opens the door and walks outside. This is not how the bracket works! The realization that the monsters could and can go outside does not make me feel any better. I curl up and lean my head against its chest as it steps over to the ledge. It emits a worried trill before cradling me closer. 
Then it jumps off the ledge, landing with a thud. The sound that escapes me is somewhere between a gasp and a gargled scream. God, Warn me next time! It rumbles apologetically, one of its claws softly rubbing back and forth on my skin. Maybe it shouldn't be soothing, but this is... The creature walks towards the ship, stepping onto the ledge without using the ladder. It sets me down on my sleeping cot before standing back up. Oh. Oh, there I get a good look at it. It's quite... It's... Be big. It's, it's big. It's, it's big. It's big. It's very big. I look down. Everywhere. I flush and look away from the substantial bulge. The group chat would have a field day. I can almost hear Ori screeching. If only the hot monster sim chat could see this now. The creature cocks his head. Oh, nothing. Just, I was just talking to myself. His shoulders relax. So, I don't mean to be rude, but what are you? The creature perks up, confused. Huh. Give me a moment. I step over to the terminal and check the data bank. The beast theory still works. Okay, hold still. The creature stands straighter and doesn't move, and I chuckle. You're kind of cute. I bring the scanner up. It stiffens and pulls back. It stands becoming defensive. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Should have warned you. I lowered the scanner. It won't hurt you, I promise. It'll just help me know what to call you. The creature relaxes a little. I activate the scanner and it blips. New creature data sent to the terminal. A bracken. So you're a pl It's a plant? Wait, wait, brackets are plants? I... I, I, I think I've just had my whole life like turned upside down. Frick. Also, before anyone mentions in the comment that, uh, oh my god, did you not read the wiki? I never read the wiki! Like, god damn it, I, I only know what I'm supposed to do with the bracket, which is to stare at it, but not for too long, and, like, just get the hell out of there. That, that's all I know what to do with the bracket, okay? I don't, I don't read the locks. I, I, I just try to figure out what to do with them, and that's it. That's it. Also, yes, for you plant nerds out there, yes, I know. Bracken is actually a plant. I, I just found out, okay? It nods, the little leaf on its head bobbing. You don't seem very aggressive. Also, yes, I also know that it is very, that it is very disrespectful for me that I notice its cake first before the fact that it had leaves coming out of its back. Okay, I know, I know. Stop calling me out. Ah. <sighs> You don't seem very aggressive. It lets out a soft rumble. I guess you're different than most. Thank you for saving me, by the way. I stretch out my hand, and it looks at me, confused. Embarrassed, I withdraw my hand. I shuffle awkwardly for another moment before a yawn escapes me. I'm exhausted. Today was a lot. For the third time today, the bracket scoops me into its arms. Hey! It deposits me back into my sleeping cot, this time pulling the blanket up over me, including my head. I laugh. I appreciate it, but blankets don't usually go over the head. It wraps its arms around itself. Is that a blush? But really, thank you. I smile with gratitude and watch the color deepen. Almost definitely a blush. Then, it awkwardly shuffles out of the ship, nodding quickly before turning and heading back to the building. I listen to the howling from the eyeless dogs abruptly quieten as the bracken emits an aggressive growl. The blast door shut, and I settle into a deep sleep. Am I really that safe with the eyeless dogs out there? Like, I, I couldn't even bring the ship into orbit. I wake to the squawking of the manticoils outside and sit up, stretching my arms. Ugh. Wow, I s slept well. I quickly brushed my teeth, ate a granola bar, and chug some water. I'm going to need more sheet metal today if I'm going to repair this ship. I open the blast doors, shielding my eyes from the harsh sun. Grabbing my flashlight and shovel, I step out onto the metal platform. As I trudge over to the ladder, I spot the bracken from yesterday sitting on the edge of the upper platform. I wave at it and chuckle as it stares back, confused. I don't suppose it knows human greetings. I quickly ascend the ladder and jog over to the tall, black cryptid. I can't help but relish the soft grumbles it emits as a greeting. Are you waiting for me? 
A soft rumble tells me that the answer is yes. I smile. I head inside the building and to my surprise, it follows behind me. The first hour is spent gathering scrap in complete peace. No monsters approaches, and the Bracken even points out scrap to me or brings me items on its own. You're like a cute guard dog. I laugh and the Bracken emits a soft, happy rumble. I take a step forward, but my foot catches on something sticky. I fall straight into a giant spider web. Dag! I try to break free, but get more entangled. The hairs on the back of my neck stand as I hear a gross, skittering sound. A giant spider appears from the hallway and barrels towards me. <laughs> I can tell the uni has arachnophobia from this god. Oh no! I freeze. Fortunately, I told the company that I had arachnophobia before I started. I scream anyway. It doesn't get closer. I hear a sickening rip and squelch as the bracken launches itself forward, bringing its foot down to stomp on the spider's head. Its clawed hand holds some of the spider's severed legs on its grip. The spider screeches before shriveling into itself. The bracken returns quickly, eyes furrowed in concern as it gently cuts me from the web with its sharp talons. This... this is the second time you saved me. What would I do without you? I laugh weakly as the bracken gently grips my shoulders, leaning down to my eye level and chirping. Die, I suppose? It's okay. Because of you. Aww. We sure it hug the bracken. I'm gonna go full on romantic. Like, I, I know I could go platonic for my playthrough. I know that I typically go for various routes, but today I just want, I just want to have a big sloppy smooch in the bracken and make me squeeze its cake. Hopefully, hopefully. I hear a soft, anxious sound emanating from the bracken's chest. Its body trembles as its claws gently reach for me. Hey. It winds and steps closer, looking down over me. I move close, wrapping my arms around its middle as it stiffens. Hey, it's okay. I'm okay, see? It steadies as one of its arms wrap around my waist, tugging me closer to its body. I feel the gentle press of its claws cradle the back of my head as it nuzzles my hair. Nothing happened, because you were here to protect me, remember? I feel it nod and press me in possibly closer. I rub gentle circles against its back with my hand. Thank you for keeping me safe. It stops trembling, emitting a soft purr instead. After a while, I untangle myself from its arms, giving its hand a soft squeeze. I move to pick up my scattered items, and I watch it heap a bunch of scrap onto its large arms. I think I'll head back early for today. Could you give me a hand? It nods enthusiastically, and we head back to the exit to grab the rest of our scrap. A little later. We drop off the last of the scrap on the ship. The Bracken gently places down several V8 engines it was carrying on its own. Having you around has been a great help! Its soft trill makes me smile, as the creature bends down for me to pat its head gently. It's only 4pm, so we've got some time before things get scary. It points to itself, a low growl emanating loudly enough that I can feel it burst through the air from its place beside me. Are you saying that I'm safe with you around? A soft rumble and a tentative nod. I don't doubt it, but we should be careful nonetheless. Oh, that reminds me. It has nodded. It was communicating! Can you teach me some greetings and stuff? The creature leans back slightly, turning his body towards me inquisitively. C come along. We'll sit somewhere a little nicer. I motion to Bracken over as I exit the ship, climbing the nearby ladder to the top of the water tank. I sit at the edge, facing the sun and letting the warm rays bask us in its golden glow. The Bracken plops itself down next to me, a pleasant sound rolling from its chest. Okay, so this means maybe I spend the next hour or so teaching it different greetings and gestures. So waving is how we say hello, but also how we say goodbye. I explain while demonstrating the movement, and laugh as it mimics my actions. You already know what nodding and shaking your head means, so... Huh. What else can I teach you? Uh, demonstrate a thumbs up. Uh, hi- How is a high five romantic? Huh? 
Huh? Da, ba, ba. Wait, wait. So you're telling me that all the times I've been high-fiving my homies, I've been romantic with them? Nice. Oh, high-fiving is a show of friendship and victory. I hold its hand up and gently clap mine against it. See? I hold my hand up again, and this time it reaches forward, but instead of a quick tap, it intertwines our fingers together and leans closer. Its body draws closer to mine. That means something different. My face feels hot. It doesn't let go. Um. It leans in closer, bringing its face to my eye level. Gods, it really is cute. Might even be better than the brain flare from Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> I know that's supposed to be the mind flare from Baldur's Gate, but Jesus Christ. I jump a little as its free arm wraps around me, a hand pressing against the small of my back. It presses our foreheads together and a hum reverberates quietly from its chest. Here, let me. I bring both my hands up to cradle its face gently before pressing my lips to its mouth. I'm kissing the bracken! Oh. This... This is how you show you like someone. It's more than a friend. The bracken emits a high-pitched sound again before it surges forward, brushing against my lips again. It pulls me closer, one of its hands, gently gripping my shoulder. One of my hands slides down its shoulder and down the... down over the corded muscles to stroke its forearms. We stay here for a while, kissing in the warmth of the setting sun. It's getting dark. The bracken nods before pointing at me. Then at the ship. I should, but hanging out with you is fun. I hear a soft rumble as the bracken tucks my sleeve, motioning to the setting sun and then back to the ship. Yeah, I know. I should. I should get back. It gets dicey at night. It sadly nods. I'll see you tomorrow. First thing in the morning. I stand and stretch my limbs before climbing down the ladder and heading back to the ship. I watch the bracken. Wondering if it'll follow me, but it instead walks towards the building. It waves, and the movement is a little awkward, unsure. Good night! I weave back as it walks inside the building. Back inside the ship, I seal the blast doors and step out of my suit. I ate, I ate a couple more granola bars before showering and brushing my teeth, plopping straight into my cot right after. I still don't have a signal yet, so I can't inform this hot monster sim chat about my makeout sesh with a strangely hot monster that I'm acquainted with on this distant planet. Think about the bracken again, I blush and trace my lips with my fingers. This is wild. That night, I dream of soft kisses, claws gently holding me, and a cute seven-foot-tall plant monster. <sighs> Day four, I guess. Am I delusional or can I be can I really be happy in this new world? You know that all just seems like titles for different isekais? Jesus. A gentle knocking rouses me from my slumber. As I sit up, I realize it's a faint thunking sound rapping against the ship's blast doors. I drag myself over and open the blast doors. Instead of the sun hitting my face, I'm swallowed by the large shadow of the bracken, bending down to fit into the frame of the door and one clawed hand grasping at the top edge of it. Hot. Hi. Could wait for me to show up, huh? The bracken nods, the movement a little more sure and practiced than yesterday. It ducks slightly and steps into the ship. It makes an inquisitive sound. Huh. Not sure what to do today. I guess we could take a day off of work and just hang out here? An affirmative purr makes me laugh. It's been a while since I've taken a day off. Come to think of it, I haven't explored this planet much. Wanna go check it out? An affirmative chirp greets my ears. We set off to explore the building's surroundings. I point out the manticoils, watching them skate around oddly with their wings spread out. The bracken chases off a baboon hawk as it gets too close, and I laugh as the offending creature bounds away squawking. We even come across several random giant pumpkins just sitting there. Huh. So it's exactly like the pumpkins on Earth. Just huge. I cut a wedge off the pumpkin and stash it into my bag. I can roast pumpkin for dinner tonight. Wait, do you eat? 
I watch the bracken cock its head to the side and shrug. I mean, if you're a plant, do you photosynthesize, I guess? It shrugs again. Well, I still need to eat, so I'm cooking this tonight. It makes a soft chortling sound, its shoulders shaky again. Are you laughing at me? It nods, and I can't help but laugh too. I'll have you know, eating food, although annoying, is a great time. You can make so many wonderful dishes. It rolls its eyes, as if telling me that I'm the one with the skill issue. <laughs> You're getting cheeky, aren't you? I yelp as it pokes me in the side. After a couple of hours of exploring, including checking out a random house that looks like it spawned out of thin air, we head back to the ship. Alright, let's get the party started. We head inside the ship, and I busy myself with seasoning and roasting the pumpkin. The Bracken stands there awkwardly before coming over to see what I'm doing. You can make yourself at home, you know. Have a look around. It wraps its arms around my waist instead, holding me close. I blush. The scene is oddly domestic, and I'm surprised at how much I like it. I wonder if we could stay like this forever. I press myself back into its chest as it bends over to rest its chin on my head. We then sit at the little table and chat while I eat. It pokes fun at me now and then. Yeah, yeah, you can just stand in the sun for sustenance. It makes a little chortling sound again. You're lucky you're cute. I don't let anyone tease me like this. I swear, it's beaming with happiness. I finish eating and wash the dishes. My thoughts constantly drawn back to the hot monster inside my ship. How would a relationship between us work anyway? I mutter quietly to myself as I dry the dishes and put them away. My eyes flake to the terminal in the corner of the ship. Wiping my hands on a small towel, I shuffle over to the machine. Tapping on the keys, I bring up the brackets file on the beast area again and scroll through. So, does it... Like, can it... You know... Why am I even looking this up? The bracket is a highly intelligent plant life form. No scientists have observed more than one bracket living in the same space at any one time. It is unknown how it reproduces. I feel like I'm being intrusive. A soft twinkling sound comes from over my shoulder, and I turn, only to be, f only to be face to face with a monster I'm thinking of horizontally tangoing with. <laughs> yeah! I fly back and bump my head on the terminal, and pain bursts across my skull. Ow! I feel clawed hands cradle my face and my eyes stare into concerned white ones. I'm okay. You just startled me. That's all. It whimpers. Hot. Does it whimper while- Focus! Wait! Don't, don't be sad. I'm not mad. I was just lost in thought. The bracket looks up at me, wringing its clawed hands together nervously. I step forward and take its hand in mine. Seriously, don't worry. You didn't do anything wrong, okay? The startled squeak escapes me when it leads down, engulfing me in a hug. It rubs its cheeks against mine, kissing me on the forehead. You are a lot more affectionate now. It's not a bad thing, I just... It's my turn to blush as it gently runs its mouth along my hand, kissing each finger. My breath catches. You learn fast. It chirps before backing away, moving to stand at its full height. Looking curiously around the room, it makes the space inside the ship look smaller. It walks over to the terminal, pressing a button curiously. I watch it move over to the hanging LED lights against the wall, poking one with its clawed fingers. Those are some lights I got to make the place look a little cozier. They're not much, but they make it feel more at home. The bracket nods, and its eyes widen curiously as it spies the blue boombox resting on the floor. Oh, this one's a boombox! I move to press the button, and music fills the ship. It plays fun tunes like this, and you can dance to it. The bracket tilts its head. Do you know how to dance? It shakes its head. Here, like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Oh, God. None of you needed to see just how cringe I am. God. I start to bend my knees, doing little quarter squats before pushing my palms out and retracting them one by one in time to the music. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not very good at dancing, but as long as you're having fun, I'd say that's what matters. I change my hand movements into fists, moving them up and down. 
The Brecken clumsily copies my movements, moving its arms stiffly. There you go. I move forward and take the Brecken's hands, resuming the dance of our fingers entwined. I laugh as we dance together, the Brecken getting more used to the movements the more time passes. I teach it to twirl, and we attempt the world's worst waltz, even mockingly bowing at one another at the end. We dance late into the night, eventually squeezing into the tiny cot together and falling asleep. Good night. I really enjoyed today. It cuddles closer. A clawed hand strokes down my back, gently dipping under the hem of my pajamas to trace the bare skin. For the first time since arriving here, I don't need the heater. Am I about to smash the bracken? Can I smash the bracken? Can I get a piece of the bracussy? <laughs> I am way too unhinged for this. Why do I feel like I'm in an anime? We walk over to the building. My hand shielding my eyes from the harsh morning sun. It's so hot! I run to the shade, ducking into it. The relief it provides isn't nearly as much as I'd hope. The bracken, on the other hand, doesn't seem to mind the heat at all. The bracken stands in the sun happily, basking in the rays. It motions me over, and I push off the wall, reluctantly joining it under the oppressive heat once more. I reach up and hug the bracken before pulling back and placing both my hands on its face. Balancing on my tiptoes, I guide the creature down for a kiss. It seems all too happy to oblige me. As I run my hands along the sides of its face, I notice a few tiny white blossoms on the top of its shoulders. Come to think of it, its whole body looks a little more greenish than before. You've been in the sun more lately, haven't you? The bracken nods, the small leaf tendrils on its head bobbing up and down. It's adorable. I stifle a laugh and gently poke. One of the little blossoms growing on its shoulder. It suits you. A happy rumbling reverberates from it, and we head out to collect scrap for the day. We spend a few hours collecting sheet metal, bolts, and scrap. We even find a few cans of unopened soda. As time goes by, however, I find my mood sinking lower and lower. Why am I even doing this anymore? There's not much else waiting for me back there, save for a... Horrible job with terrible pay and a whole ton of... A whole ton of debt. Do I even want to leave anymore? Is there much point in collecting stuff and... To try to fix the satellite so I can send a signal to the company? I look up, prompted by a soft whine. The bracket is watching me, concerned. I'm okay, I'm just... Thinking. It tucks my sleeve and cocks his head. Gently patting my head before picking up all the scrap, carrying it to the exit. I follow along, curious. We arrive at the ship, and it dumps the scrap in a little pile. The bracket then turns to me and holds up one finger. One? It nods, then points to us both. Then the ship. Hang on, the ship. An affirmative chirp. But then it holds up two fingers. Two? Another nod, and this time it points once again to both of us before pointing back at the building and then back at itself. Hang out in your room. It nods, pleased with its communicating abilities. Hmm. Let's hang out in the Bracken's room. I want to check out your little... I want to check out your room, Mr. Bracky Wack. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I guess we could go to yours. I don't think I've seen it before. I grab some items from the ship before we head back inside the building. We walk through the hallways without much trouble, and I eventually enter a much larger room with beige walls. So, this is where you sleep. The bracket nods. I look around. There's a pile of blankets in the corner and... Are those my lights? I see the fair lights from my ship. They're not plugged in, but laying on the floor, carefully arranged. I watch the bracket wring its hands together before it reaches a hand forward, gently stroking my face, then bringing my hand to the heart. Did you do this to make me feel at home here? Those are some lights I got to make the place look a little cozier. They're not much, but they make it feel more at home. It nods. You're so wonderful, you know that? It chirps happily. I sit on the pile of blankets, beckoning it over to join me. I have an idea. The bracket cocks his head as I move to lie on the blankets, Reaching into my bag for the two books I brought along. Uh, let's see. Is it wrong to have a meet cute in a dungeon? 
The demon king wants to marry. Uh, okay, okay. We have two routes going on here, okay? Like, over on YouTube, okay, we're going down the safe for work romance, but over on Patreon, you get treated to a major piece of that bracasy. I mean, if you want some of it, I mean, hey, uh, link to my Patreon is down in the comments. But anyway, uh, we gotta make a quick save right here. And uh, is it wrong to have a meet cute in a dungeon? Let's read something. I hold up a book titled, Is it wrong to have a meet cute in a dungeon? My friends back home told me it was a good read, and they gifted it to me before I came here. Something about it suiting me or whatever. The Bracken sits next to me, curiously eyeing the comic in my hand. I open the pages as we read together. The first chapter shows a novice adventurer entering a dungeon on their own. They're clearly not well equipped for the upcoming adventure. As they make their way through, they encounter a monster that looks much too strong. <laughs> Just like when you and I first met. The Bracken rumbles an affirmation. I turn the page and watch as the MC attempts to fight the monster before giving up and... Flirting? Okay, this is so silly. The claw finger turns the page. He seems to like this. The Bracken shrugs and looks at the images in the book. It shows the monster blushing and flirting back, while the other more seasoned adventurers look on in shock. Ah, so that's why you like it. We spend the next few minutes reading the book, finishing a couple more chapters before discarding it to the side, wanting to do something else. I reach over shyly, entwining our fingers together and rub my thumb in little circles on its skin. It looks down at our hands inquisitively before shuffling closer and placing both our hands on its lap. Its skin is cool to the touch, the texture similar to the soft, waxy surface of leaves. You know, the last few days have been really great. The bracken turns to face me. I was just so tired all the time. I thought getting more education would help me find a better job, but it didn't, and I resented working here. But not anymore, because I met you. It wraps an arm around my shoulders, pulling me to rest my head on its chest, we lie back on the blankets. Can I stay here? The Brecken huffs, as if telling me, why do you even need to ask? Obviously, we need to fix the ship and get the signal back. I can't go radio silent to my family and friends. I feel it nod. But I'm pretty sure the company doesn't care about me anymore, since there's no way the ship can fly again. The Brecken grabs me with its strong arms, pulling me up until I'm lying on top of it, wrapping me in a tight hug. Do you want me to stay? Again, the same huff. Obviously, it implies. I mean, if you'll have me here, I don't see why not. I laugh as I feel it purring excitedly, trying to hide its joy and excitement. I move up to kiss the bracken, pecking it on the mouth. It responds by hugging me tighter, rolling onto its side, and cuddling me even closer. You're rather clingy, you know? I didn't say it was a bad thing. I like being close to you. The only concern I have, though, is where we're going to live. I don't want to take you from your home here and ask you to live in the ship, but I also can't move here. Or I'll probably die. The bracket sits up, squeezing my shoulder reassuringly before it points to the door of its room to imply the monsters in the building, and then back to itself, dragging a single talon across its neck. It looks proud. Now where did you learn that? It shrugs and I laugh. I can't ask you to clear out the entire compound. It's dangerous and a lot of work. The bracket shrugs again before flopping back down to the blankets, looking at me. I'm sure we'll make something work. Since the ship can't fly anymore, maybe we can renovate it, make it bigger? It rumbles in agreement. I shuffle closer, cuddling up again and resting my cheek against it. I reach a hand up to, sque to gently squeeze at the bracket's chest. Yay! Bracket movie! <laughs> <laughs> Damn, what size bra do you wear? Why did I do that? Ignore me. The bracken murmurs and wraps an arm around me. I curl into it. Let's go exploring again tomorrow, okay? It chirps softly before kissing my forehead. I sigh happily and close my eyes, drifting to sleep. I feel warm, safe, and happy. Everything... It's just perfect.
Ending four. Quota filled. Two months later. So, yeah. We've been really happy ever since. I'm sitting in a group call with the Hot Monster SimChat crew. After some time, we managed to restore the signal. S so, can you show us the hottie you're in love with? Only if it's okay with it. I motion for the Bracken to come over. It stands in front of the camera, waving awkwardly. Oh, wow! Yeah, it's pretty cute. The Bracken kneels down to kiss me on the cheek. The group chat explodes in awe at a single gross! But seriously, we thought you were dead. Everyone on Earth, including your work, thinks you perished. I mean, Tube. Even we thought they were dead. We even built them a shrine in Finite Daydream 14. Nothing like legally dying to get all your debt erased. All according to Keikaku. I whispered to the Bracken. Keikaku means plan. I flash a peace sign as the chat groans. So you're just staying there. Yeah, I'm much happier here with my love anyway. Plus, the company designated this planet as Baron, so I doubt they'd even come looking for me. Man, I want to get stranded on a deserted planet and meet a hot monster too. Ha, <laughs> maybe one day. Until then, you've got Narcus from Ball's Gate 3. <laughs> anyway, gotta go. It's date night. We say our goodbyes and I hang up the call. I sit up next to the Bracken who was already who already has the terminal set up to crispy roll. I didn't expect you to be so excited when I told you that is it wrong to have a meet cute in the dungeon got animated? I laugh and lean over to kiss the Bracken softly before pressing play. Ah! Hey. I love you. The Bracken chirps and taps its claw three times against my heart, telling me the same. We kiss again, then lean back against the pillows, fingers and claws intertwine as the next episode begins. The end. I was working a terrible job, so I quit and fell in love with a monster, and now I love is the strongest in the world. Anyway, that was Is It Wrong to Kiss the Bracken? I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourself, the link to the game will be in the description below. Also, like I mentioned before, like there are some scenes which I had to cut out and actually put up on Patreon. So like if you do want to watch that, hey, again, link to that is in the comments. I can't put it in the description because YouTube really doesn't like that. Um, you're going to be missing out on this if you don't. Two! 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 He the, the, the dragon has two! The, 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 the. Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh holy shit. Oh divides. Oh my god. It's absolutely slanging. I'm proficient in dual wielding. Give both to me. So yeah. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion signing off. Ciao.